So I said this is a small part of the previous video, but how transformations are reflected and how they're combined is actually unique to the equation as well. So what we're going to do is do this set of transformations, this two dilations, one from the y-axis and one from the x-axis, to this equation y is equal to, this, to x squared. And how it combines, you'll see, is actually unique to the equation itself. Let's just go ahead and do this and see what our result is going to be and see if it's kind of what you expect. And then from the video, we're going to take away how transformations are actually combined. So dilation by a factor of 2 from the, from the y-axis and a dilation by a factor of 8 from the x-axis. So again, when we have uh, transformations in succession, we're just going to apply them in order. Now, to be honest, one of them is a dilation from the y-axis, one is a dilation from the x-axis. So you can actually do these all at once anyway, because one just affects the x-value and the other one affects the y-value. So they're actually kind of independent of each other at this step. So what we can do is multiply our x value by 2, so 2x comma y, and then when we do our second step, we can keep the 2x, but then we have a dilation by a factor of 8 from the x-axis, which multiplies our y value by 8. So therefore, we end up getting x dashed is equal to 2x, and y dashed is equal to 8y, and therefore we end up getting x is equal to x dashed divided by 2, and then y is equal to y dashed divided by 8. Then what we do is we put these expressions into our equation just like usual. So we end up getting y dashed over 8 is equal to x dashed over 2 all squared. Now this is where the specific function that we use makes a huge difference with what our final equation looks like. Because what you can see is that we have x dashed over 2 squared. So the squared makes a difference to what value is actually represented here. So you'll see what I mean once I actually you know, multiply this bracket out. What we end up getting is y dashed over 8 is equal to x dashed squared divided by 2 squared, which is 4. But you can imagine if you had a different power here, then the number on the denominator would be completely different. So it actually depends purely on the type of function that we have. And then when we multiply the 8 to the other side, the 8 and the 4 can combine. So you end up getting y dashed is equal to 8 over 4 x dashed squared. That 8 divided by 4 is just 2, right? So we end up getting 2 dashed, 2 x dashed squared as our image equation. So therefore, our image is y is equal to 2x squared, which is, uh, which is weird, right? Because what we've had is two dilations, one from the y-axis and one from the x-axis, and it's actually simplified to a pretty simple equation. y is equal to 2x squared. Now, y is equal to 2x squared is just pretty much a dilation by a factor of 2 from the x-axis. So what's actually happened is that these transformations or these two dilations have been combined and simplified to this equation to become just y is equal to 2x squared, which is just a simple dilation from the x-axis. And this commonly happens when you have dilations in both directions. I'm trying to think of if it happens with the reflections. Not really, because reflections in the x and the y-axis are usually pretty independent. And then same for translations as well. You're affecting two different directions. But the thing about dilation is that a certain stretch in one direction will be the same as a certain stretch in the other direction, but the amount of stretch that kind of correlates to each other is purely dependent on our function. So for example, if we did exactly the same process to a square root function, we're actually going to get a completely different result. Should we actually do that? We've already done most of the hard work anyway, so we might as well actually try it out and see what we actually get. So let's actually do this really quickly. y is equal to the square root of x. What we end up getting is y dashed over 8 is equal to the square root of x dashed over 2 if we put in the same expressions there. So now what we get is y dashed is equal to 8 square root of x dashed over 2. Now, can we simplify these any further? Mm, actually, we can because we can rewrite we can rewrite 8 as the square root of 64. And then we can combine these two together. So I'm just trying to, I'm doing this live, so I'm trying to figure this out as I go. Yeah, so then you can combine these thirds together, right? So what you end up getting is y dashed is equal to the square root of 64 over 2, x dashed, and 64 over 32 becomes, or 64 divided by 2 becomes 32. Yeah, nice. Very nice. Okay. And you can see that this is completely different to this representation, right? This is actually a dilation by a factor of 1 over 32 in, from the y-axis. Yeah, 1 over 32 from the y-axis because you reciprocate the dilation uh, in the, in the y, from the y-axis, sorry, or in the x-direction. 
swim. So you can see that we can apply the same transformations or the same set of transformations to both this equation and this equation and how they combine is completely different. So this kind of proves that when you have transformations to a certain function, how it's represented another function is sometimes similar, but these are kind of counter examples to prove that they're not always the same. And in this case, they're completely different.